What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video. Today, we're going to be talking about 20 drivers you should keep your eyes out on for heading into the 2023 season. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. The first driver you probably should keep your eyes out on is a driver of the eight car for Richard Chillis Racing, Kyle Busch. Obviously, Kyle Busch will be leaving Joe Gibbs Racing and will be heading over to Richard Chillis Racing for 2023 and will drive the eight car. He will have Randall Burnett as his crew chief as well for 2023. While sponsorship has not been found for Kyle Busch heading into 2023 as of now, it sounds like sponsors are going to be willing to work with them. This is a massive pickup for Richard Chillis Racing heading into next year, and I'm expecting massive, massive things for Kyle Busch. I would not be shocked or surprised if Kyle Busch ends up having his best season that he has had since 2018 where he had eight victories. Number one, that eight car was very, very fast with Tyler Reddick last season where he ended up scoring three victories where Reddick scored three. I think Kyle Busch also having a new fresh experience, a new place to go next year, I think will play a major factor in helping Kyle Busch be extremely competitive. I'm expecting major things for Kyle Busch. I think he'll be extremely competitive, and I think he's going to make Rich Schultz Racing long-term a really competitive team. Would not surprise if he wins the championship in 2023. I think he's going to make them championship caliber team again in 2023, and I think Kyle Busch is definitely one you need to keep your eyes on because I think he's going to be very, very fast. Watch out for Kyle Busch heading into 2023. The second driver you need to watch out for is a driver of the five car for Hendrick Motorsports, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson did not, of course, make the championship for us, coming off a little bit of a down year where he only scored three victories. But near the end of the 2022 season, Kyle Larson really started showing up. He had three straight top tens, including having two top fives in the first part of the play that round. Didn't have a great race to Las Vegas, but he ended up winning at Homestead, finishing second at Martinsville, ended up having a really strong run at Phoenix where a majority of the day he ran in the top five. And a lot of times historically, the guy who really kind of has a lot of momentum going into the next year tends to run very well. Look at Carl Edwards, for example. Struggled for most of 2010, but ends up having a great end of 2010 where he ended up winning two races. And then he went on to have a dominant year in 2011 where he only scored one win, but ended up being extremely consistent and for most of the year being the favorite. Well, I don't think Kyle Larson is going to get back to the numbers he had in 2021. I think Larson really has a chance of going back to getting his second championship in the last three years. I think it's very, very possible, and I think you're going to have to watch out for Kyle Larson because I think he'll be a threat to win the championship. The third driver you need to watch out for is a new driver of the 45 car for 2311 Racing, Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick will be leaving Richard Toast Racing after 2022 and will be headed to 2311 Racing this upcoming season in 2023. Tyler Reddick was extremely inconsistent in 2022, where he had a lot of inconsistencies, but along with the inconsistency, he did get a couple victories, two at a road course and one at a regular mile and a half track at Texas. I'm expecting Tyler Reddick to do some big things at 2311 Racing. I think he's going to have very similar numbers to what he had in 2023, except I think he's going to be way more consistent. I think it's around three to four wins in 2023. And I think that 45 team is going to be extremely fast and show a lot of pace and a lot of speed. And I think he'll have a lot of good sponsors as well. And that's another big thing for Reddick is that he's going to have a lot of good sponsorship and a lot of good funding helping him out heading into 2023. So I think Todd Reddick is absolutely going to be a threat at the number 45 car next season. And I think he will definitely be a threat to be a fast driver and contend for a championship in 2023. The fourth driver you need to watch out for is a driver of the nine car, 400 Motorsports, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott is coming off a very, very good season where he had his second, basically he tied for the winningest season he had in his career, where he had five victories. However, the playoffs did not go as well as he only, I think, scored two or three top tens in the playoffs and only scored one win in the playoffs as well. And unfortunately, he ended up crashing out on the last race after contact with Ross Chastain. But I expect Chase Elliott to do pretty good. Now, do I think that Chase Elliott in 2023 is going to have the same numbers as he did in 2022? No. But I still think Chase Elliott is going to be pretty consistent. I think he will be a championship threat in that number nine car. And I definitely think you're going to have to keep your eyes out on Chase Elliott. I think Elliott will be a legitimate championship contender. Very similar to his teammate Kyle Larson. I really think that he is going to take some pretty, some have some decent numbers next year, get a couple victories. I think he'll have a legitimate chance and making it to the championship. I watch out for Chase Sully because I think he will be a legit championship threat. The fifth driver to watch out for is a driver of the 23 car for 2311 Racing, Bubble Walls. 
Bo Wallace is coming off a very, very good season in 2022, where he started off the year kind of a little bit on a rough note, where he only had a couple really good finishes in the first half of the year. But when he made that pick crew swap for Atlanta, they really started showing up. In fact, they did so well, they actually ended up winning at Kansas. Now, they had their incident in Las Vegas against Kyle Larson. Bubba Wallace did, where he basically got into a fight and basically had confrontation and retaliated against Kyle Larson. But he had a one-race suspension, came back the next week at Marzel, and guess what? Ended up going having a top 10 finish in eighth position. He had a pretty decent run at Phoenix as well. I think Bubba Wallace is going to be coming in this year with a lot of good momentum. Number one, he's going to basically have Kurt Busch as a great mentor, who will not be returning 20 through 11, at least on a full-time basis, as he basically announced retirement from full-time competition. I think Bubba Wallace is going to be not a championship threat, per se, but I think you have to look at Bubba Wallace as a driver, especially with Reddick coming on to the team next year. I think he is going to run a lot better than he did in 2022. It would not surprise me just on points alone if he makes a blast, but I think he's got a good chance to at least get one win in 2022. 2023, I should say. I think he's going to be a threat, and I think he'll be definitely one to watch out for heading into the 2023 season. Keep your eyes out on Bubba Walls. The sixth driver you need to watch out for is a driver of 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports, William Byron. William Byron had a pretty solid year in 2022, where he actually got his first multi-win season of his career with two victories. However, he also is very inconsistent. I think he only has six or seven top fives throughout the whole entire season, and that's one thing that William Byron is definitely going to have to work on heading into 2023. However, near the end of this season, William Byron showed a ton of momentum and showed a ton of promise, and I think that promise could lead to some great things heading into 2023 as well. I'm expecting big things from Byron. I think the 24 team is only going to get stronger, and I think the older Byron gets, the better he is going to get. Would not surprise you if Byron does end up going out and winning a championship maybe in 2023. I think you have to look at him as a kind of a legit championship threat heading into 2023. But I have to see what happens with Byron. But I think Byron absolutely will be a threat and will be very, very fast heading into 2023. Watch for William Byron. The seven driver you need to watch out for is a driver of the 12 car for Team Penske, Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney is coming off a very good year. Despite not winning a race in 2022, Ryan Blaney was extremely consistent. So consistent to the point that he nearly had a chance to make it to the championship four based off of points. He had a few races where he kind of got away from him where he made some mistakes. And if he doesn't make some of the mistakes he makes in the playoffs, he has a really good chance to make championship four and go out and win and get his only win of the year because Ryan Blaney was very fast at Phoenix. Now I'm expecting Ryan Blaney to basically be going out there and being a bad out of hell. I think he's going to be really, really fast in 2023. I think Ryan Blaney is going to be basically on kind of a revenge tour to get a few wins, which I think he gets at least a win or two next year. I think he does get back to victory lane. But the big question is, can he work on that consistently enough to where he could be a legit championship threat? Who really knows at this particular point? We're going to have to wait and see, but I do think Ryan Blaney will be very, very fast heading into 2023 and will show some good speed. The eighth driver you need to watch out for is a driver of the 38 car for Fromer Motorsports in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, actually the Craftsman Truck Series, Zane Smith. Zane Smith is coming off of winning the Truck Series title in 2022 after a very strong season where he scored four wins in the season, including that championship win race at Phoenix. Zane Smith also will be making some select cup starts in 2023. We'll be making around five to six cup series starts. Farmer said they're very close to announcing those plans this past weekend at Phoenix. And I think that they'll announce those plans probably in the coming days and weeks. Zane Smith is definitely Ford's future driver, in my opinion. When you look at the talent of Zane Smith, he is an extremely talented driver. And I think that after winning the title, he's going to be a championship threat in the truck series once again as well. I think he's going to be very, very strong be a very, very competitive in that number 38 truck. And I think you have to look at him as a legit championship threat once again. Probably, honestly, the favorite. Though I think guys like Ty Majesty are going to be fast. Ben Rose are going to be fast. Because those guys are going to be returning to Thor Sport next year. I really do think that Zane Smith will be a legit championship threat in the truck series once again. And will contend for some pretty good runs in the Select Cup Series race as well. Whenever those are officially announced. The ninth driver you need to watch out for is a driver of the 18 car going to next year for Joe Gibbs Racing, Ty Gibbs. 
While it's not been officially announced, it's expected at this point that in the coming days, we'll know about Ty Gibbs' future, which will be him going to the Cup Series. Now, there's definitely a lot of hype around Ty Gibbs going into 2023, especially since he just picked up a, his first ever NASCAR Xfinity Series title in his first full season in the Xfinity Series. Ty Gibbs is going to be someone to watch out for. But I will say his starts in Cup have not been too impressive. That being said, though, I think he's definitely going to be one to watch heading into 2023 because a lot of people are very interested to see what Ty Gibbs will be able to accomplish next year and what kind of pace he's going to have. While I don't expect Ty Gibbs to completely set the world on fire, I think he will contend for a playoff spot next year to make the playoffs in 2023. But I think he'll run around 15th or 20th a lot of the year. But I think that Ty Gibbs will actually be somewhat of a threat in some races next year, especially at Super Speedways, because Toyota scenes have gotten better, especially under Super Speedway program. And maybe their intermediate program is where we actually showed some pretty good pace at tracks where I think he'll do good, like Michigan. I think he'll be a threat in some areas, and I think he'll be definitely one to watch out for sure heading into 2023. The 10th driver you need to watch out for heading into 2023 is a driver of the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell signed a long-term extension with the team, so he's definitely the future driver of Toyota. Christopher's coming off a very strong year as well in 2022, where he scored three victories, including two clutch victories at the Charlotte Roble and, of course, at Martinsville. Christopher Bell had a very strong year where he made the Final Four. Now, he did not, in the end, win the title because he had a bad pit stop on the final stop. But I do think that Christopher Bell is generally going to be a championship threat once again. Now, do I see Christopher Bell winning a ton of races next year and winning, like, three races again next year? I'm not really sure. But I do think that you got to look at Christopher Bell as someone who's going to probably be very, very quick and show some great pace and great speed next season in that number 20 car. I think he's going to be a legit championship threat again in 2023. I think you have to look at him as a championship four threat again as well. And I think that he will be a guy to watch out for heading into 2023. Keep an eye on Chris Rebels. I think he will be a championship threat once again. The 11 driver I think you need to watch out for is a driver of the one car for Trackhouse Racing, Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain is coming off of a dream season. While not winning the championship and finishing second in the championship in 2022, Ross Chastain did incredible for the ride. Many people in 2022 projected he wouldn't even make the playoffs, including myself. He proved all of us wrong. He got two wins in the season and made it to the championship four and had a chance to win the title. And won some pretty good races as well. Won at Coda in their second running there. And won at Talladega by basically not doing a single damn thing. I think that Ross Chastain, well, I don't think he's going to go out and dominate and be as good as he was in 2022. 2023, I think Trackhouse is going to probably show great speed and pace once again. I think Chastain is a very, very talented driver. A driver I think will do pretty good. I think it's a win or two next year. I can see him doing very similar numbers, which would put you in a championship Thor if your numbers are very similar to last year. I think Chastain will be very, very quick in that number, number one car, and I think he will be a legit championship threat. The 12th driver you need to watch out for is Ross Chastain's teammate and the driver of the 99 for track house racing, Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez in 2022 had a pretty solid season where he scored one win but had a lot of top fives and a lot of top tens. And I expect that Daniel Suarez is once again going to be very, very quick in 2023. In fact, I think he's going to be so quick that I think Daniel Suarez is going to jump from a playoff contender to a championship contender. I think that Travis Mack is a very, very good crew chief and the best crew chief that Daniel Suarez has had in his career. But not only that as well, Daniel Suarez has been getting better. And you have to remember that Daniel Suarez is only 30 years old. I can see Suarez winning at least two races in 2023. And I really think that he is going to be absolutely a threat to make the championship four. I know it sounds crazy to say for a guy like Daniel Suarez, who hasn't really gotten to that point yet, but he almost made it to the round of eight. And if not for a power steering issue... I think that he would have definitely 100% made the round of eight. And maybe just maybe with the pace he had in the champ in the round of eight, I think that he could have been a championship four contender. But we'll see what happens. And I think Suarez will be at the one to watch. The third team driver you need to watch out for is a driver of the eight car for Junior Motorsports, Josh Berry. That's why we got another Xfinity Series driver we're talking about. Josh Berry was impressive this season. While not as impressive as I thought some of us were going to be, he was going to be, he still was very impressive. Josh Berry scored three wins in the 2022 NASCAR Xfinity Series season. In 2023, 
I think he's going to be a front runner for the championship. He was very, very fast at a lot of tracks. He was a little bit inconsistent at Phoenix, the final race, but I think that with guys like Noah Grayson, Ty Gibbs, and A. Jalman Dinger basically jumping up the cup next year, I absolutely think you're going to have to watch out for Josh Berry heading into next season in Xfinity, especially since I think Junior Motorsports has absolutely gotten way better as an organization, and I think they're even going to be better next year with the addition of Brandon Jones. I think Barry will actually be, once again, be a legitimate championship contender in that number eight car. Watch your Barry, because I think he's going to be very, very fast in 2023. The 14th driver you need to watch out for is the driver of the two truck for Rev Racing, Nick Sanchez. Now, a lot of you are going to be very surprised that I'm mentioning Nick Sanchez because there's other drivers I could have mentioned. But Nick Sanchez is a driver who had my eyes on really for the last year or two. Really since his ARCA days and winning the ARCA championship in 2022, I've had my eyes on this guy. This is a guy that I think can legitimately win a Cup Series title. And he's going to be full-time in the Truck Series next year with Rev Racing. In a select Xfinity Series starts in 2022 with Big Machine Racing, he was very, very impressive. Got some top 10s and contended for top 5s as well. And he qualified at, on 3rd in, in the Xfinity Series race at Phoenix and was running 2nd at points in that race as well. I think the 48, well, he won't be in the 48 cars. Parker Klugerman is going to be in the 48 next year. I think Nick Sanchez driving that number 40 in number 2 truck with especially with KDM coming over to the team next year, I think that you got to look at Nick Sanchez as a legit playoff contender. I think Nick Sanchez is going to be very, very quick, and I expect Nick Sanchez to be extremely fast in 2023. Watch out for Nick Sanchez. I think he's going to be very, very quick next season in trucks, and I think he could get some wins as well. The 15th driver you need to watch out for heading into 2023 is a driver of the 43 car for Petty GMS Motorsports, Eric Jones. Eric Jones in 2022 impressed the hell out of me. Eric Jones scored a win in the Southern 500 and was very, very quick and very, very impressive throughout the season. So quick that at one point he was actually legitimately in the top 10 in the regular season standings, around 11th or 12th in the regular season standings. The 43 car has not been that competitive really since around 2011 or 2012 and really since when Richard Petty drove the car, when Bobby Hamilton drove the car back in the 1990s. With Jimmy Johnson coming over to the team to be an owner of the team, because, of course, Jimmy Johnson will be joining the team, uh, will run a couple select starts, and with him being a part owner of the team, I think Eric Jones is going to really skyrocket into really, really good numbers heading into 2023. And we'll talk about his teammate in just a second here, but I think Eric Jones will have to legit be a legitimate threat to be an underdog for the playoffs and maybe an underdog for the championship, because I think Petty GMS is taking major steps forward next season. The 16th driver to watch out for is Eric Jones' teammate and the driver of the 42 car for the Penny GMS, Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson is coming off of an insane NASCAR Xfinity Series season. While coming up short and finishing second in the title, Noah Gregson had an eight-win season. And without a mistake on pit row, he probably goes on to win the Xfinity Series title. Now, Noah Gregson's cup starts have not been that impressive, but I think when you look at Noah Gregson, I look at someone who's got so much potential and so much talent behind him. I think Grayson especially will be really good. He's got Luke Lambert jumping up with him next year, which I think is a big pickup for Petty GMS Motorsports heading into next year. And I think that Noah Grayson is really going to gel really well with Luke Lambert next season. And I do think that Noah Grayson will be an actual legitimate champ. He's not a championship contender, but I think he'll be a legit playoff contender and contend for a lot of top 20s heading in next year. I'm expecting big things from Noah Gregson heading into 2023. The 17th driving to watch out for is a driver of the 22 car for Team Penske and defending Cup Series champion, Joey Logano. Joey Logano is coming off of a four-win season in the NASCAR Cup Series, but of course he's also coming off of winning the NASCAR Cup Series title for the second time in his career. Joey Logano, I have a little bit lower on this list for many reasons. A lot of times the defending champion, they don't seem to run as well the next season. Look at guys like Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch won a championship in 2019. He fell off in 2020. Uh, Chase Elliott kind of fell off a little bit in 2021, but didn't really. And then Kyle Lars had a little bit of fall, but he really didn't. Now, Logano, I still expect to be a championship threat heading into next year because he's got all that momentum winning the title. But I don't think he's going to be the same driver. And historically, Logano has missed the Final Four every other season. 2018, he made the Final Four. 2019, he doesn't make the Final Four. 2020 makes Final Four. 2021, he doesn't. 2022 makes the Final Four. So I don't think Logano will make the Final Four in 2023. 
That being said, though, I think Logano will get some wins, a couple victories, and I think he's one to watch for once again in 2023. The 18 driver you need to watch out for is potential driver of the 18 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, Sammy Smith. While it's not been officially announced about Sammy Smith, Sammy Smith is 100% likely to be driving full-time in the Xfinity Series heading into 2023. Sammy Smith is an extremely talented driver. He's a driver that needs to be 100% taken seriously. This guy ran extremely well in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing. The best driver, I think, maybe outside of Trevor Bain, the best driver who drove in the Xfinity Series last year for Joe Gibbs Racing there. I think he's going to be a legitimate championship contender in that number 18 car next year in the Xfinity Series. And he really, I know, he don't need truck starts for sure, but I think that Sammy Smith will absolutely be looking as a championship threat for the Xfinity Series. I think that number 18 is going to be quick. Watch for the 18 truck team in the Xfinity. He's going to be the 18 next year. Watch for him in 2023. The 19 driver you need to watch out for is a driver that's not been announced for anything, but Haley Deegan. Now, Haley Deegan is someone that probably a lot of your surprise that you even have on this list, considering she did struggle this year in the truck series. And while I 100% agree with you that she did struggle in the Camping World Truck Series in 2022, Haley Deegan made her NASCAR Xfinity Series debut. I talked about it in a video earlier today or yesterday when you're watching this about where I think she's going to end up driving. And I think that she's going to likely be with Ross Racing's NASCAR Xfinity Series program. I think her going over there will be really big for the team, and she's got sponsorship and funding, which is what they're going to need. I think the fact she's got some sponsor funding that are willing to probably work with her will play a major factor into getting her that opportunity to drive there. I think Haley Deegan will be with SHR and Xfinity, and I think she's definitely one that could be an outside contender for the playoffs in Xfinity. And a 20th and final driver that you need to watch out for is a driver of the 48 car for, for this, well, Jazz Minnick, for it's going to be 40 or not since Patty GMS wants it, but the potential driver of the 48 car, Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman is returning in 2023. The reason I have him this slow compared to his teammates is just because of the fact that I don't know how Bowman's going to do with the, because of the concussion like symptoms he had recently. I don't know how bit much that is going to play a factor in Alex Bowman's performance. Granted, I still think Alex Bowman is going to be very, very competitive and very fast next year, but will because he does have Blake Harris coming on as a crew chief next year. But does this hurt his performance? We don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. But I think Bowman will have some pretty good runs in 2023 and probably be fast as some types of trash because Hendrick is a team that generally shows a lot of pace and speed throughout time. I think he'll be a threat in some races, but we'll have to wait and see. So those are the 20 drivers that you need to watch out for. Now I'm going to mention some honorable mentions of drivers to watch out for. First, Kevin Harvick, unclearly back after 2023. I think Harvick's going to show a lot of pace next season. Next driver I'm going to be talking about is Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith, driving a 16 car for Cog Racing and Xfinity next year, had a great year of KBM and trucks, nearly won the title there. I think he's going to be a really big threat, had a couple Xfinity series starts, ran pretty good there. Next driver I'm going to go ahead and mention is Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin barely missed the list. Hamlin, I think, will be good, but not fantastic. Mark Trick Jr. is next. MTJ will probably be, once again, back in victory lane. I don't know how well who do. And then finally, I'm going to mention Austin Sindrick as the last guy I'm going to mention on this list. Austin Sindrick, I think, will be very, very quick next year and improve consistency-wise from even this year where he showed some good pace consistency-wise. So, those are the 20 drivers and some of the honorable mentions you need to watch out for heading into 2023. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Provocations on speed notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Please search him below over that and comment below your thoughts on today's video. Which driver are you most watching out for heading into 2023? Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're going to have a massive NASCAR news recap video. We'll be recapping all the news in the motorsports industry basically since the past week. Then on Saturday, I might be having a team preview drop or some other type of video. We're going to have to wait and see. Sunday, we're going to have the Formula 1 race review from the Brazilian GP. And then Monday, I'm not sure. You may be seeing the first team preview this weekend or maybe a 2024 schedule predictions. Who knows at this point will be coming on the channel during the off season. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.